This is the second of five videos for principals and members of the school executive to learn about QuickSmart. You will remember in the previous video, I provided a brief overview of the QuickSmart in Schools program. Significantly, there is now conclusive evidence from extensive data collected over 14 years to show QuickSmart delivers strong effect sizes in schools for these vulnerable at-risk students. However, if your school wants to make an even greater, even more sustained impact on students, then principals and members of the school executive need to be involved. It is a necessary condition for you to want the best for low achieving students, to allocate resources to support them and to have high expectations of these students. But it is not sufficient. You need to understand the QuickSmart program, what happens, why it happens and the type of support you need to provide. If you can achieve this, your school results will achieve very high effect sizes. Some of the other ideas I addressed in the first video included QuickSmart is a second chance program and is directed at numeracy and literacy for students in years four to nine who are struggling, sometimes for no obvious reason. QuickSmart has been in operation since 2001 through the Simmer National Research Centre at the University of New England. And the QuickSmart program actually involves two distinct parts. QuickSmart Numeracy, working with basic maths and problem solving, and QuickSmart Literacy, with a focus on reading, vocabulary and comprehension. QuickSmart has principals in over 1,200 schools across Australia who have chosen to join the program. And the target for QuickSmart is primarily those students in the bottom 30% of the achievement spectrum. By watching this video, it says to me that you are interested in having an impact on those low achieving students in your school and you want to make a genuine difference. If this is the case for you, the first two questions you would most likely want to ask are, what is the evidence base? Is it extensive? And second, what are the theory ideas behind QuickSmart? First, I want to talk about the evidence base. Too often, principals are placed in positions of, trust me, and the ideas presented seem logical, but they are usually offered in a data-free zone. QuickSmart stands as one of a few interventions in which data are submitted from all sites. Our reports are published annually, hence the successes of QuickSmart results are well open to public scrutiny and readily available on our website. So there is an expectation when you join QuickSmart that your school will submit confidentially pre and post data. These data will be analysed and returned to you about the performance of your students on the program. Analyses undertaken since 2001 have identified impressive, statistically significant end of program and longitudinal gains using probability measures and effect sizes. These confirm verbal and written reports by principals, teachers, teacher assistants and parents about the strength of QuickSmart. Independent, federal, statewide or standardised test assessments gathered from QuickSmart and comparison students over 15 years show overwhelmingly that Indigenous and non-Indigenous students in QuickSmart have made substantial academic improvement and have narrowed the achievement gap. Research data from across Australia involving tens of thousands of students report effect sizes between 0.60 to 0.94. This translates into growth of two to three years in one year compared to the gains made by average achieving students. You would be aware that effect size of 0.3 is an expected yearly growth for non-QuickSmart students. You can expect in QuickSmart substantial improvement on test results in the first year of implementation. You can also expect that these results are enhanced in the second year as you, your staff and QuickSmart instructors become more experienced and more knowledgeable about how to improve learning outcomes. You'll be pleased to know that student learnings continue to develop years after students exit the program, with academic gains being maintained and often enhanced in subsequent years. Indigenous students receive great benefit from the program and these benefits mirror those of non-Indigenous students. Principals report increased student engagement in class and improvements in attendance and behaviour as a result of QuickSmart. I want to turn now to the theoretical base. QuickSmart employs a blend of cognition research and evidence from studies on the brain to guide the planning and execution of the program. 
At this stage, I focus on three important aspects. In the case of working memory, working memory space is finite and limited. Low achieving students use up too much of this capacity with basic skills and place themselves in situations where they do not have the achievable cognitive skills needed for problem solving in maths or comprehension in literacy. Neural networks, once established, are almost impossible to disestablish. QuickSmart helps address these neural networks that are inefficient. This is achieved by developing new neural networks and this takes time. For low achieving students, this means starting QuickSmart where they are at and providing an effective, appropriately challenging environment for students to work and for them to want to put in effort to do better. QuickSmart also focuses on critical aspects of learning, such as automaticity, where basic fundamental skills take up little working memory. Deliberate practice. This is about focusing on students practicing to improve their performance. Errors play a critical role in learning in QuickSmart and they need to be seen by the instructor and student as a doorway into how students can genuinely improve. These theory perspectives underpin QuickSmart and are shared through practical focus workshop with QuickSmart instructors and over time with whole school staffs. Finally, I want to return to the issue of evidence. In hundreds of meetings across the country involving principals, instructors, teachers and parents, common themes have emerged. These meetings spoke with a single voice about how the QuickSmart program has provided students with a strong basis for many important attributes seen as critical for lifelong learning. I have listed these in summary form in the following slide. What came from these meetings was that students showed demonstrable growth in things like risk-taking, where they exhibit resilience, they make statements like it's okay to make a mistake, and they start to genuinely trust their head. Self-regulation is also critical, where they have some control over their behaviour, they learn how to deal with their own success and failure, and they show persistence in trying to get more difficult maths questions or English understandings out. Metacognition is also key, where students begin to start talking about factors that are influencing their learning and how people learn. And they start thinking about whether they've slept long enough, whether they're putting in enough effort and other variables. People speak about the growth in personal motivation, where students for the first time in education are setting personal best goals and other goals that they feel that they can achieve. The social skills, because they're working in pairs, they're learning about working with others, being supportive of successful and non-successful peers. And finally, they start to learn about broad learning ideas, such as the importance of being focused on what you're doing, putting in effort, being organised, the importance of deliberate practice, and in ma many or most schools, the students themselves start to learn about the brain. I will stop here and I encourage you to join me in the third video of the series. In the third video session I talk about what QuickSmart would look like in your school.